Hi everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. Happy New Year! I'm gonna go ahead and apologize in advance if I sound sick in this video because I'm like mildly sick, but I wanted to film this anyway. Today I'm gonna be talking about my top books of 2017 and I've picked 12 of them. So I don't know what to call this. I'm saying top books because it's not necessarily my favorite books. Like, not all of these are 5 star reads, though most of them are at least like 4.5 stars. Not all of these are 5 star reads. These are just the ones that have stood out to me the most like throughout the year and across the time. So I'm just saying top books or standout books or something like that. And these aren't like in a ranking order, this is just going to be in the order that I read them. So in February, I read the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I have read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone like at least 10 times, I'm pretty sure, but this was my first time reading the illustrated copy and it was so good. Like, it was beautiful. I'm not gonna say like what this is about. Obviously this is middle grade magic fantasy. I don't know how you couldn't know what this is about, but the art in this, Jim Kay's illustrations, are gorgeous. Here is an example. This is pretty much just the cover image. These pictures just really brought the story to life for me again and I really enjoyed it. I also read the illustrated version of The Chamber of Secrets this year, which I gave 4.5 stars, but this was a 5 star read for me. I think Chamber of Secrets might actually be my least favorite Harry Potter book, but Sorcerer's Stone definitely was better for me. Then in March I read A Memory of Light, which is the 14th book in the Wheel of Time series, and this is the final installment of the Wheel of Time. It's hard to say what this is about because it is the 14th and final book of the series, but it is adult epic high fantasy, and it's essentially the whole storyline is following these three village boys named Randolph Orr, Matrim Cawthon, and Perrin Ibarra, and how they are pretty much changing the world. But that's all I'm gonna say without spoiling like everything in the series. Suffice it to say that by the time book 14 gets here, they are no longer the same village boys that they were in book 1, The Eye of the World. This is now my all-time favorite series. I don't know that it's gonna hold up as that across time, but I do really love it. This was kind of one of my first introductions to adult epic fantasy, and I just loved that so much. And I'm to the point where like I don't enjoy YA fantasy nearly as much anymore. I just... adult is what I need to read from pretty much from here on out. I started this series near the end of 2014 and it took me until March 2017 to complete it because it's 14 books and they're all like this big. I was really happy to finish this but also really sad and I cried a lot and it was just a really good read. Then in May I read my favorite contemporary of the year and that was The Hate You Give. Like I said, this is a YA contemporary and it's following the life of Star Carter who is a 16 year old African American girl after she has witnessed her childhood friend Khalil being shot by the police. This is an owned voices story and it was inspired by the Black Lives Matter movement. I teared up and cried a little bit so many times in this because it was just like really heart wrenching but at the same time it was full of warmth and like love and laughter even. I'm just really excited to see what Thomas produces next. She's one of my auto buy authors now. This is just, I would recommend this for everybody. Then in June, I read Words of Radiance, which I don't have a copy of right now because I lent it out to a friend, so I'm just showing you the dust cover. Words of Radiance is the second book in the Stormlight Archive. I just read The Way of Kings, the first book, and it was good, but Words of Radiance was excellent. Again, this is the second book in a series, so it's a little bit difficult to explain exactly what it's about, but this is adult epic high fantasy. It's really following a few specific people in the world of Roshar, which is a planet system in Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere as well as this specific planet, and these people are kind of discovering their surge binding abilities and powers, which is something that's ancient and that hasn't been around for like hundreds of years after this event called the Recreance. And these Surge Binders are Knights Radiant, or they will be Knights Radiant, like that is the whole thing. This is like the Knights Radiant coming alive again. I finished Oathbringer earlier this month and that is the third book in the Stormlight Archive that just came out. I have an entire spoiler free and then spoilery review. It was like good but also disappointing because Words of Radiance was just so excellent that I think I had set this extremely high standard and bar for Oathbringer. So I was so excited for it to come out. There is so much payoff in this book, 
as compared to the way of kings and even really with Oathbringer because I feel like you become so much more acquainted with the world and the realm that Stormlight is taking place in and how everything works. And I think that's a pretty popular opinion from what I've seen of other Sanderson fans. Then in September, I picked up Anne of Green Gables for the first time and I read it for the reading quest for the challenge of the first book in a series. This is a middle grade classic set in Canada that I didn't really remember the story of. I know I probably saw like movie adaptations of it as a kid, but I somehow never read it. And oh my gosh, did I love this. I'm gonna read the second and third book, I hope, next year. But this is following Anne Shirley, who is an orphan girl, and she is just so full of spunk and life and curiosity and wit. I just, I adored her. Like, from the second I met Anne, I just knew she was a protagonist that I would love. And her entire story is just adorable. Like, yes, it's sad that she is this orphan girl who has these feelings of, like, not being wanted and stuff like that. But at the same time, like, I mean, I don't know if you could call it found family because it is, like, becoming a family because she's taken into this family. <sighs> but it just worked so well. And I can't wait to continue on with this series. I don't know how I never read this book. And this is actually the only classic that made it onto this list because I think this is my favorite classic that I read for the year. Or at least the one that stood out the most to me. In September for the reading quest, I also read A Grief Observed. This is like a mix of Christian theology as well as a memoir because this is Lewis talking about his wife passing and then as the title says, observing his grief. This is like his journal, his diary, after his wife has passed away, and I believe they were only married for about four years. And how he processes that, and then his own doubts in his belief system, and how he comes to terms with that. And I really enjoyed this, like looking at it from a theological perspective, as well as from the like, counseling and psychology perspective on grief, and how he's handling it. That was just really interesting to me. And also, the way his grief and loss took a toll on his faith almost, like how he had to kind of combat the sense of doubt and like trying to understand how he was going to make sense of this based on his worldview. And I just thought that was incredibly interesting because it was extremely introspective. It wasn't just like writing off any of these feelings that he had. Like I think he was fully delving into them and accepting them for what they were. So I would highly recommend this to everyone. Like religious and non-religious because I think that there's something that can be taken from this even though it is ultimately like a semi-theological text. Now we're getting into October which is when I really kind of discovered graphic novels, most of which I won't have on hand because I borrow them from the library. In October I took part in hashtag get graphic and though none of the graphic novels that I read for that reading challenge made it into this list, it did kind of spark my interest in reading more graphic novels. So in October, I read The Complete Persepolis. This is a graphic memoir and I've come to realize that I loved graphic memoirs and it's my favorite kind of graphic novel. The Complete Persepolis is following Marjane Satrapi's life as she is growing up in Iran during the Iranian Revolution and then when she moves to Austria and her entire like life experience and how she processes her experience based on like how she was raised and with her family. I just thought it was really interesting and I like Marjane as a person quite a lot even though I realized like she's flawed and she made mistakes sometimes in her life like but everybody does. So it was just very humanizing and there were sections where I was just like I related to her a lot like as a kid I think she thought she was a prophet or something like that and she was like I wanted to be I think she said something like she wanted to be justice and love and the wrath of God all in one and that was something that I just feel like I understood somehow like I don't know if it's from my own perspective or for if or if it was like as a kid I could relate to that but something in me really resonated with that idea of like I wanted to be these things and I wanted to be able to encompass all of this and then also like the need or want to be special. Maybe that's the Enneagram type 4 in me coming out even though I'm a one wing two. I have a four component <laughs> so feeling like you need to like make a difference or be something. I understand that. But anyway this isn't a dissection of my character or anything like that. I'm talking about books. I love Persepolis. 
I felt like I understood her and I was really interested in her experience. I talked about Marjane Satrapi a little bit recently in one of my videos about new to me authors that I really like. Then November was a great reading month for me because three of the books that are on this list I read in November. And no, I don't think it's because it's like just the most recent things that I read. I think these books are going to stick with me for a long time. The first one was When Breath Becomes Air, which is kind of a medical memoir. It's Paul Kalanithi talking about his life and being like a mid-30s man when he's diagnosed with cancer and he's having to come to terms with the fact that he's going to die and he's not going to do everything that he always wanted to do and just like he's thinking about his philosophy of life. It was just something I resonated with so much because he was into English and science and that was something that I could understand. He loved Walt Whitman, who is my favorite poet. This was him talking about medicine and science, but combining it with his love for philosophy and English. And I just, I understood his worldview, and it made me really sad to realize that he had passed away by the time the memoir had been published. And I just kind of wish I could have met him. And I'm sad that there's not going to be any more work by him that's ever published. Like, he couldn't make it onto my favorite new-to-me author because that's the only thing he ever had published. And though it was heartbreaking, I'm really happy that we got to experience this piece of Paul, those of us who didn't get to know him. I feel like I've talked a lot about When Breath Becomes Air, so I'm just gonna cut that off here. <laughs> then in November for Tom Topple, I also read Blankets, which is a semi-autobiographical graphic novel. It's kind of like YA contemporary, but I think a lot of the stuff that is in Blankets was taken from Craig Thompson's own life and experience, and I just don't know how much of it was his life and experience. It was classed in my library as fiction, and I've seen it classed on Goodreads as fiction, but I know that the character was referred to as Craig, and I know that like the sibling rivalry was something he experienced, and it's talking about his first love like with a crush on a girl he had and I've talked about this a lot before but I just thought that was so sweet the way it was done it wasn't like angsty teenage romance it had those like feel-good feelings about it while also acknowledging some of that not drama exactly but when it doesn't work out <laughs> and then I was really interested in how Craig Thompson talked about his experience in like a religious community and going to like the church and the youth group and everything and almost some of the like indoctrination I feel like I'm not saying that right but whatever I'm sick I don't care that takes place in some of those settings I just thought that was really interesting and I liked the way it was handled and also the art was beautiful I highly recommend this to be read during the winter time I mean, the title of the book is Blankets. It's the kind of thing that would be great to curl up in a blanket with in the cold and to read. And so much of the art is snowy and takes place in the winter that it would just be perfect. And then finally in November, I read The Mad Ship, which is the second book of the Live Ship Traders trilogy. Again, this is something that I can't say a ton about because it's the second book in a series, but this is adult epic fantasy and it's introducing a lot of the stuff about dragons that's going to take place I think in the realm of the elderlings and it was just really really well done. I have talked extensively about the themes that were presented particularly in this book that I loved and I thought were so well done so I'll just like link below or in the cards some of those videos because I've already talked about this a ton. I love the themes in this book. I love observing the society and the politics and then how things become normalized and I need to cut myself off because I have a couple more books to talk about, you should read the Live Ship Traders trilogy. Then in December I read Nimona, which is a YA fantasy graphic novel. I did not expect for this to be one of my all-time favorites when I was reading it or when I picked it up because I kind of thought that it would be, you know, goofy, whatever. And it was in a lot of ways, but at the same time it had so much more heart than I expected and a lot of like accepting people for who they are and loving them despite their flaws and recognizing when they're flawed and that sometimes like the people you love aren't great people. Like that was really good. I did not expect to get that from this graphic novel when I picked it up and when I started it. But I understand now why so many people love it. And then finally in December I have a graphic novel on hand because I haven't returned it to the library. This is my last book for my favorites from this past year and that was Rosalie Lightning. This is another graphic memoir and this one was honestly like heartbreaking. <laughs> like just thinking about it and remembering it makes me feel really sad. <laughs> 
This is Tom Hart talking about the death of his daughter before she turned two years old. She passed away like in her sleep when she was just shy of her second birthday and it was heartbreaking. This was another like observation and like sharing their grief but also sharing Rosalie's life <laughs> that just like it was so good. It was a hard read because I feel like we hear things about like people losing spouses and stuff like that or losing parents but like I haven't read very many things about an adult losing their child, their very young child. And then also Tom Hart apparently lives in the same town that I do and I did not realize until I started reading this and they were making references to my town and I was like wait a second and I looked in the back and we live in the same city. So I was seeing references to areas that I knew and I think that just like made it hit home with me even more because I realized this was a child who lives in my or who lived in my community. I mean it's sad no matter what but that connecting piece I think just really drove it home and seeing like little graphics where I was like I know where that is. There were so many metaphors and stuff that were used through visuals and everything about like he and his wife being in a boat sometimes and stuff like he was drawing off of like a cartoon that he had seen but like making these connections that again they just made so much sense to his experience. But these were the 12 standout books for me for 2017. I realized that only four of them came from the first half of the year and that eight of them came from September on and I'm pretty sure that that is because I joined booktube around the end of July. I think that joining the booktube community just helped me to figure out even more what it was that I liked and to get recommendations for great books. So comment down below and let me know if you've read any of these and then also what are some of your favorite books that you read in 2017. Thank you for watching, I hope you have a good day, and until next time, bye and happy new year.